I arrived at the Polish-Ukrainian border in the small village of Medica less than a week after Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. My goal was to talk to refugees that started pouring into Poland. By that morning, several hundred thousand people have already crossed the border, often with no more than one suitcase. Millions would follow in the months to come. As a journalist, I looked for people to talk to so I could tell their stories. There was one catch though, I didn't speak Ukrainian. Right now, I can proudly say ja hovoriu ukraińskoju. Dobre. Ja bliższe rozumiju niż możu skazaty, but still Taking into account that it took me only four months to get to this level, I'm still pretty impressed. Today, I want to tell you the stories of other Poles and Ukrainians who decided to learn each other languages and what it meant for their lives, but also for the future of uh, both countries. Volodymyra, drogi druże, drodzy przyjaciele, sojusznicy bracia, pani ta panowie, to zasi. Dla przywódcy każdego państwa mówić w ten sposób zwracać się do Polaków. Me nazwaty Mateusz Górn. Nazywam się Dmytro Dymidiuk. Me nazwaty Erika. Ja mam na imię Ludmila. Me nazwaty Łukasz. My name is Anna Ohojko. Mam na imię Julia. Ja kamera operator w Telebaczeni w Polsce. Wczu ukraińską mowę w trzy miesiące. Pisze polskiego od lipca. Ja wywczaję ukraińską mowę Z początku winy. It's not only me, nor the people that I talk to that suddenly started being interested in learning Ukrainian. For example, Anna Ochojko, the founder of Ukrainian Lessons podcast, uh, said that right after the war broke out, the number of users of her podcast has risen fivefold. Before the war, uh, there were mostly practical reasons to learn Ukrainian, and the most pop popular reason, I would say, before the war was a family reason, uh, because uh, some Ukraine, uh, some uh, men or women married someone in Ukraine, and um, they had to communicate with a family of uh, their husband or wife. Then there were other reasons like uh, heritage, learning when people wanted to re reconnect with their uh, ancestors, uh, but now um, people uh, with heritage and people without heritage, without any connection to Ukraine, they learn the language uh, for many other reasons, like, as I mentioned, to support the fight uh, of Ukraine, is to, to keep involved in Ukrainian context, to, be, to support refugees. The Duolingo, a language learning app that probably many of you know, uh, has reported that uh, in the first months after the war, the number of people learning Ukrainian rose more than 500% globally, and um, and 2,677 percent in Poland. That might be because there were not so many people learning Ukrainian in Poland before the war, but ever since thousands upon thousands of refugees started pouring into Poland, the interest has risen substantially. Uh, next day uh, after uh, Russian attack on Ukraine, <clears throat> I had this thought that uh, uh, I have a colleague in Ukraine. I, I didn't speak Ukrainian and Russian at all at this moment, so I just I uh, put it into a a tra Google Translator, like a, a message, if he needs uh, any help, uh, we will help with some other people that know him. Uh, he, he wrote me back that he needs help because uh, his wife a uh, few days before went to Germany with his aunt uh, and they cannot come back. That was the beginning of this journey because like uh, after a few days uh, his his wife Olga and his aunt Natalia they came to uh, to Warsaw and I just took uh, care of them like in my apartment and for one week we just uh, communicated 
we just had contact via Google Translator. <laughs> Uh, and after a few days, I went to, uh, uh, to Ukraine for almost two weeks uh, to do my job as a cameraman. Uh, and I was in Lviv. I was my second time in, uh, in my life. And um, mm, I was so pissed that I couldn't read like, uh, uh, like uh, names of streets or in, like in a restaurant in menu. So I had this thought that maybe uh, this is like perfect time to uh, <clears throat> to start learning Ukrainian in the future when it's gonna be like better times. I will meet with Olga and Yakov and their kids and uh, speak like normally Ukrainian, uh, drinking coffee. Привіт, привіт. Як тебе справи? У мене все добре. А у вас? Добренько. Розкажи, як тебе настрій? Де ти зараз є? Dimitro is a 20-year-old PhD student in history. He used to teach Ukrainian high schoolers and prepare them for the exit exam. Um, but as the war broke out, he lost almost all of, of his students and thus his income. Uh, and then he thought that maybe he can market his services to Poles needing to learn Ukrainian. And he convinced his wife, Yulia, to do so as well. And this is how we met. I found him online on one of the Polish websites. Będę, ja budu staratysia govoryty ukrajinskoy. <laughs> okay, uh, dawaj tak, pidrucznik. And quickly we started having two, three, sometimes even four lessons a week. Uh, how do you feel when people come to you and ask you for uh, to teach them Ukrainian? I'm always, I am always smiled. I, I feel happy that not because money, it's not about it, but because that, yes, my language, somebody needs my language. Because to tell you the truth, Ukrainian language is not popular in the world at all. Within the first months of war, he collected around a dozen of students. Um, around half of them were journalists like me and Mateusz, but many of them had different reasons to start to learn Ukrainian. For example, Erika, who is a student, wanted to uh, learn the language so she could help. Many of them told me that even before the war, they wanted to learn another language, non-Western language. And they often told me that even before the war, they were considering learning either uh, Russian or Ukrainian, but the war made it easier for them to choose. I was really fascinated by Russian and Ukrainian for a while. So I was wondering, in fact, before the war broke, um, whether should I whether should I learn Russian or Ukrainian? Um, I remember my parents telling me I should start with Russian because it's the most sort of used language of both. Um, but apparently after the war broke, <laughs> the choice was kind of easy. If we have more than 3 million people the three million Ukrainian in Poland, we can say that they should uh, learn our language, especially they, they live in, in Poland. But uh, I think to fully understand each other, um, we should make vice versa. So for me, it's a, I just like learning languages. So for me, it's a, a little bit something peculiar that I can start learning uh, Slav language because usually I just learned uh, uh, Western European uh, languages. But what is missing for me is like uh, kind of a Slav language. So can be Russian, but right now uh, a situation a little bit changed. Uh, we talk about the Ukrainian. While even before the war, there were many Ukrainians coming to Poland to work and many of them already spoke Polish, like both Dimitro and his wife, Julia. Uh, but some had to learn Polish upon arriving here after the war broke out. One of them was Ludmila. The data gathered by Poland Central Bank in the two first months of the war uh, shows that uh, only 5% of Ukrainian refugees coming to Poland had a good knowledge of the Polish language. Um, but around the half of them declared understanding Polish well. Ludmila was one of the people that have never been to Poland before even though she had family here. 
коли ми приїхали. Я майже не розмовляла. Я просто не розмовляла. Я багато гуляла, намагалася осягнути, що наразі відбувається, задавала собі питання. Війна? У 21-му сторіччі? Війна? Серйозно? Ущипніть мене, будь ласка. То війна? Дайте прокинутися. Ну ні, ну то не може такого бути. Ну то, ну, то неможливо. Там я не думала, що взагалі мені, в, тому березні, о, в квітні місяці, я не думала, що я колись взагалі е, візьму якісь уроки польської. Mm-hmm. Поясню чому, Аліця, ну, направді поясню чому. Бо... When she understood that it is not possible as soon as she would hope for, she decided to start learning Polish. Мені дали можливість, мені дали шанс працювати координатором в бюро mm-hmm. на фабриці. І ну, якби я не могла собі дозволити сидіти, бекати, мекати. Ну, якби я хотіла підтримувати розмову, я хотіла мати можливість е, запитати нормально, mm-hmm. не, е, не, ну, якби хотілося просто нормально підтримувати діалог, е, спілкуватися і бути корисною в цій іпостасі, в якій я вже на той момент знаходилася. Nevertheless, she told me that she was very much pleasantly surprised to learn that Paul started learning uh, Ukrainian. І що робили поляки? Що робили польські діти? Це дуже цікаво. Uh, вони намагалися розмовляти українською. Mm-hmm. Аліці, розумієш? Це, mm-hmm. це настільки було незвично, бо Ну, типа, це ж ми якби приїхали в гості, mm-hmm. так? Ну, якби вимушене переміщення особи. І ніхто не має підлаштовуватися під нас. Це ми маємо підлаштовувати. And Ludmila wasn't the only one to start to learn Polish. Another language learning app, Babbel, reported that after launching their free English, German and Polish course for Ukrainian refugees, around 40,000 people started learning. Uh, Polish. How bridging of this linguistic language gap will play out in the future, it is probably too early to say, but it is interesting uh, to see how the languages are starting to influence each other. Most notably, after the war broke out, there was a linguistic debate revived uh, about how, which preposition to use in Polish to say in Ukraine. Na Ukraine or w Ukraine. Thank you for watching. And if you want to know more, check out the story that I have written on this subject for Notes from Poland. And uh, let me know how did you like this video. It is the first one that I have made, so I would really like to know your opinion. And let me know if you want to see more stories from Poland in this form.